Now, Echo, when we're dealing with um, people who already have their primary residence, we've already, you know, bonded your primary residence, and let's say whatever number of years that you are in that bond, but you're now looking at adding an investment property, you know, how should we be looking at how we go about budgeting for that um, investment property and making sure that we set ourselves up in the best possible way to also be able to potentially scale the property. But how do we then get people to, you know, getting that first investment property and then that second investment property? Okay, so cool. I'm glad you've asked that question because that's a good question. And for you to start um, in terms of getting going about getting your first investment property. So let's let's assume that whoever is buying has got their own property, or even if they don't have their own uh, uh, primary residence property, you're going to buy your first rental investment property. And what you need to look at is your cash flow, and that's ties into budgeting. So your cash flow and how do you go about? And I always say it's simple terms. If the bank is willing to give you two rent and they ask you to pay them back three rent, you need to find that person that's going to give you four rent so that you'll be able to save a rent. And why are you using, and we go back to that 80 to 80 principle. So why are you saving that rent? And that's precisely this. So the most important number you have to look for in business, and it's not only property, it's also business. You need to, you need to understand what an ROI is and how to go about calculating your ROI. So again, your cash flow. So your cash flow is important. And, and that's how you need to look at things. So first you need to do your research. You, are, you need to understand what you're doing and then tie it back into the budgeting. Remember, it's all about making your money like you trust you and make you more money. So that's what, that's what you need to look at. And if you have a property, you can refinance that property. I always say it's the best way to go about scaling up. If you have a property, and why do I say refinancing your property? Because there will be an equity portion. So for example, you bought a property for 100 rent, you've paid it down and you only owe the bank 8, 8, 8, 8, uh, 8, 80 bucks then you've got a 20 rand equity in the business. You can then use that 20 rand equity as a down payment for your investment property. And that will minimize the mortgage that you pay on a monthly basis. And once you've done that work properly and you understand that the rental market is higher than what the bank is going to ask you to pay, then you find. But you must also and that you must also know there are other expenses, operating expenses that you need to consider. And hence, it's important to look at your ROI, understand the numbers, understand what you want to do and wh where you want to go. The crucial thing, it's not even only the budgeting, it's why. The first question is, why am I doing this? If you're going in for fun, don't do it. Don't call it investment. That's, that's number one. If you're going in for fun, don't bother. You're wasting your time. If you're going in for business, then think business. And that is what the cash flow becomes sense. And this is what we look for. And this is what we also teach on the property ask a call classes. We're here to help people to leapfrog and get out of the rat race. And basically that's it. And you can see I'm very passionate about this because it's just a simple thing. It just takes discipline. Real estate investment, people make it look very easy. But it's a simple thing and it's a discipline that you need to follow. And once you've gotten that, it becomes a sailing process. Um, Eko, I'm keen to hear from you, you know, before we wrap up, any last thoughts around some of the things we probably shouldn't try to jump into uh, when we're buying the investment properties? What are some of the things that we probably shouldn't try to rush into as we make that decision and eventually uh, buy that uh, investment property? What I will add on is underestimating your expenses. And that's, what, and, and that's what we need to be careful of. We should not rush into licenses. And don't go into buy a property without going to visit the property. You need to look at that property. It's very crucial. People will sit, somebody will sit in Cape Town and say, hey, I saw a property in Hebrew and I want to buy because it's cheap. But have you, do you, have you gone inside? Do you understand the body corporate? Do you understand all those, you know, soft 
aspects of property management. So those are the things. And if you can't get there yourself, get somebody to do it for you. Get a good agent, form a mastermind group. There are always people that want to share. So have a team of professionals around you and tap into those resources. Those are the things that I would advise people to look at. And all the things that ties down into the ROI, because your ROI basically is your, is your net profit over, over your cash invested. And once you've done it properly and you've understood, so he's saying 10%, you're saying add the buffer. The point is, historically in South Africa, we've gone to a level that we hit 26% interest rate. So how do you balance it? So doing your proper research, you can comfortably say that you're looking at an ROI of 15% or, 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 or whatever that it is. But that will tie into it because it will help you with your expenses. It will help you with the income coming in. It will help you with the mortgage that you have to pay. All those factors will work, it will come into it. It will help you with the legal cost. And that is what I've done extensively with the videos. And also talking about not rushing into things. Another video I did is called on property ask a call is to is called how to raise unlimited loans from the bank. And that's again. What are the processes that you follow? What are the things that you need to do? And, and, and that's what we, look, we need to essentially, uh, essentially look at. We, re we highly appreciate it. We wouldn't be where we are now. We're sitting on 185 subscribers in a very short space of time. We couldn't have done it without you. So we really appreciate and we thank you.